Good afternoon, my name is Marla McGinnis and I will be your moderator for today's media availability. Joining us today are Jason Mew with Nova Scotia's Emergency Management Office, Bob Robichaud at Environment and Climate Change Canada, Sean Borden from Nova Scotia Power, Christina LeMay from Cape Breton Regional Municipality, Ansel Langell from the Canadian Red Cross, and Troy Red with Nova Scotia Public Works. Mr. Mew will start us off with, a, with some opening remarks and then we'll take questions from the media. Go ahead, Mr. Mew. Perfect, thank you very much. Uh, hello everyone, I'm pleased to be joined here with a few of our partners to provide a brief update on the preparations uh, underway across Nova Scotia in advance of uh, the approaching storm. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Environment Climate Change Canada, Nova Scotia Power, Nova Scotia Department of Public Works, Cape Breton Regional Municipality and the Canadian Red Cross uh, for taking the time today to join us uh, in this update. These are just a few of the partners uh, that we'll be working with in preparation for the storm. Um, I, we know that there's other partners that are fully engaged in their own preparations at this time. And we ha hope to have others join us in the future here uh, as we're gonna have many more updates uh, as this storm approaches. Now, just let me tell you about some of the work that we've been doing and then I'll turn things over to the moderator to facilitate questions today. So the Nova Scotia Emergency Management Office, uh, we've been working closely with federal, provincial, municipal and corporate partners to monitor the storm, identify potential risk, and to prepare to respond to, to these impacts. And uh, as you're well aware, based on the current projections, um, and, and the storm is gonna make impact uh, with Nova Scotia, uh, we'll be activating the Provincial Coordination Center at 8 a.m. on Friday, September 23rd, and we'll be operating 24 seven uh, until the situation uh, has been resolved and the storm has passed. So just at this key time, I'd like to pass on some, some messages to Nova Scotians just to make sure that everyone continues to monitor local weather forecasts and take some necessary precautions to be ready uh, before the storm hits. Uh, I cannot stress this enough, just being aware and prepared by securing outdoor items, furniture, you know, uh, items you might have on your patio, uh, trimming or moving some, you know, damaged trees or limbs, and, and just making sure you, everyone has their 72 hour emergency kit ready and, and obviously charging cell phones and, uh, and other devices just to ensure that you're as prepared as you can be uh, to weather out this storm. And then also just to remember to check in on your neighbors and help uh, where possible. Um, with that, I'll turn things over to the moderator and we'll be happy to address uh, your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll now call upon reporters um, to ask their questions. We do have a number of reporters on the line, so we'll um, use the one question, one follow-up format. Um, when I call your name, please identify who your question is for. We'll start with Mike Gorman with CBC. Go ahead, Mike. Thanks. Mr. Mew, uh, back when Hurricane Dorian passed through Nova Scotia, one of the aftermath complaints was that cell phone providers were not part of the command center. I, I recall the former premier uh, being dissatisfied with that. What can you tell us about whether or not cell phone providers are going to be part of your command center and, and what steps are being taken to ensure we don't have the outages that we saw during Dorian? Uh, yeah, no, so we've been in contact with our, uh, our, uh, communi our communication providers such as Bell and Eastlink and Rogers, uh, and we recently just had an exercise uh, with those uh, representatives, so uh, we believe they'll be fully engaged uh, in this storm, uh, and we've reached out to them to, uh, to, just to identify who is going to be present uh, working with us in the Provincial Coordination Centre you know, throughout this storm, so um, we're looking for full participation uh, from any of these critical infrastructure providers. And, I and question. yes, I do. Thanks. Mr. Mew, I think this is for you, although um, perhaps the Red Cross might have something to say about this as well. As you know, we, we have folks in various parts of the province who are living in tents at the moment. Um, what steps are being taken to, to check in on those people and, and get them to a place that, that would be more secure than, than outdoors over the weekend? Yeah, so we, we're reaching out to municipalities and we have been for the last couple of days uh, to ensure that uh, comfort centers are ready. Uh, and if the need arises, uh, we can open shelters, uh, and that would be done through the Red Cross. Okay, next we'll move to Creason Age Cody from CTV. Go ahead, Creason. I guess this is still kind of a wait and see, uh, depending on which direction this hurricane goes, but um, can you kind of explain to the public, um, should they be alarmed, should they be worried? kind of give us give the public a general sense as to what to expect from this storm is that for myself or for bob or environment canada i guess whoever can answer it maybe maybe yourself as well mr mew 
Um, so looking at the modeling uh, and obviously the uh, briefings we've uh, received from Environment Climate Change Canada, uh, it does look like Nova Scotia will be impacted. Uh, so I think everyone should take this uh, storm seriously and make the necessary preparations so that uh, you know they can ride out the storm. Uh, um, and you know, obviously going back, just having your kit ready, having a plan for your family, um, charging your cell phones. But uh, we will definitely see impacts from this storm. Uh, they're going to vary depending on uh, what part of the province you're in, but uh, definitely uh, now is the time to make those preparations. And do we have a general sense as to how many people are going to be impacted? Um, as far as, um, I, I'd say most of the province is going to be impacted in one form of an, or another, uh, but we are probably going to see more severe impacts uh, in central and eastern Nova Scotia. Next, we'll move to Jen Taplin with the Chronicle Herald. Go ahead, Jen. Uh, just wondering, are there any areas where you're, you're expecting some localized flooding? Uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're definitely gonna be getting a lot of rain. Um, and uh, there's, I know Environment Climate Change Canada are, are firming up those forecasts and we'll have more information on the exact amounts uh, tomorrow. Uh, but uh, definitely uh, Central Nova Scotia and Eastern uh, Nova Scotia uh, are going to receive a, a fair amount of rain. So uh, we've reached out to municipalities to make sure that they're aware that uh, that flooding could occur. Has there been any, oh, sorry. Uh, has there been any thought to any evacuations along uh, along the coast yet, or is that still too early to say? A uh, little too early to say. We'll have more information as the forecast uh, firms up in the next day or so. Uh, but we'll certainly be in touch with all the municipalities uh, and prepared to uh, to advise if uh, that becomes an issue or, or an action that we have to take. Just a reminder, reporters, please identify who your question is for so um, so they're prepared to answer. Um, next, we'll go to Kyle Moore with CTV Cape Breton. Go ahead, Kyle. Uh, my question is for Christina Lamy. Uh, just first of all, Christina, can you tell me what the CBRM is doing to prepare and get ready for um, for the the, uh, the storm? Emergency oh, emergency management's been at this now for a couple of days. We are very much in the method right now of telling people to be ready in every sense of the word. Uh, prepare your around your house. Prepare uh, the the materials you're going to need: water, batteries, um, fuel your car up, everything that you need to do to be ready for what could be an extended power outage. Uh, so we're looking very much right now at, at the message to the community and the message to to everyone across Cape Breton to, to prepare, to prepare today, uh, continue to prepare tomorrow uh, for, for a very intense event on Friday evening into Saturday. And Kyle, do you have a follow-up question? Yeah, are there any plans to open comfort centers before the storm or after the storm? I'll turn that over actually to Bruce McDonald. Our, our emergency management lead is here with us as well. So this is Bruce McDonald, who's the emergency management lead for CBRN. Hello, Kyle. So we've reached out to the partners we normally set up our comfort centers through. We traditionally don't open them prior to the storm. We don't want people traveling during the impact phase and it may be dangerous. And we, we also want to take a look and see where the greatest impact is within the municipality. So although we do have that network of comfort centers established, we won't be opening those prior to the storm. And when we get that information on uh, greatest impact, and once again, when it's actually safe to travel for people to go to a comfort center site. And we continuously encourage, of course, 72 hours personal preparedness and making sure that if you're at home, that you have a plan for yourself and your family and that you have your emergency supplies available. Okay, next we'll go to Chris Connors with the Cape Breton Post. Go ahead, Chris. Chris, are you here? Okay, we'll move on to uh, Evan Taylor with CKBW. Go ahead, Evan. No, okay. Let's try Steve MacArthur with Hot Country 103.5. Steve, are you there? Sorry, I am here if we want to circle back. Okay, uh, let's, we'll stick with Evan then. Evan, do you have a question? Yeah, my questions are for Mr. Borden. Um, firstly, uh, what resources have been mobilized at this point in time by Nova Scotia Power in anticipation of the storm? Uh, so we've been watching the storm all week like our partners and getting prepared for it. And to date, we've mobilized over 500 uh, field resources. We'll continue to monitor the weather and adjust our resource plans uh, in the coming days. 
And then as a follow up, um, just how do you reflect on this past summer, how tree clearing efforts went? Do you feel the power lines are in a good position as we go into this storm? Are you guys on schedule as to where you wanted to be or behind? Just uh, kind of how are we doing on that front? We continue to make investments on tree clearing around the lines every year. That's something that's a part of our normal course of business. Uh, that said, the wind speeds in this event are very significant. So there could be trees that come into contact with uh, power lines causing outages uh, just based on the sheer magnitude of the wind speeds coming with this weather system. Okay, um, we'll move over to Steve MacArthur with Hot Country 103.5. Steve, are you there? Okay, um, do we have Pat Healy with the Laker News here? Yes, I'm here. Okay, go ahead, Pat. Um, this question is for Mr. Mew. We have several uh, warming centers like the Wellington Station House that are warming centers. Can they be uh, activated as shelters when the time comes, if they're needed, for the community residents? So that would be a decision for the municipality and the Canadian Red Cross to discuss. Uh, not all facilities uh, are adequate for a shelter. Uh, but that's part of uh, the Cane Red Cross standard. So municipalities uh, would, would obviously reach out to us, uh, and then we would bring in the Cane Red Cross and, and look at the facility. And if that facility didn't meet the needs, then we'd be looking at other facilities. Pat, do you have a follow-up question? Yes, I do. Also for Mr. Mew, I think. there's off, For many of these past storms, there's people saying they're overhyped. What's your message to those people that think there's too much hype for storms such as the one that is coming up for us that's forecasted to his, hit us? Well, I mean, it's, uh, I think it's all about, uh, you know, uh, monitoring a lot of the different, uh, you know, your municipal websites, uh, environment, climate change websites, and looking at what these, I guess, these subject matter experts uh, that, that actually do track storms and, and respond to these and what they're saying. So, you know, we're all saying that this is going to be a significant storm. Uh, people should make the preparations uh, that are required uh, just to make sure that they can be safe and their families can be safe. Uh, the storm's going to start impacting Nova Scotia, uh, you know, Friday evening and, and over Friday night into Saturday, Saturday night. So, you know, we're just asking everybody to be prepared and um, it, it doesn't hurt to take those extra precautions just to be on the safe side. Thank you very much. Um, just before we move on to the next question, um, Bob Robichaud, do you have anything to add to uh, Pat's last question there? Uh, well, essentially, the, I mean, what we have is the, the, the latest science in, in tracking these particular storm systems. Uh, the satellites that we have, the computer models that we have, have come such a long way in the last few years. Um, just in terms of satellite imagery alone, we're so much better at being able to track these things than we were just only five years ago. So uh, the science is at a point now where we, we get a pretty good idea of where these storms are going to go, uh, how intense they're going to be. Uh, but always when we start to drill down to the local level, that's where things can change a little bit. Uh, and the important thing right now, as Jason men mentioned earlier, is to just keep an eye on, this, on the forecast here over the next few days as we start to firm up the scenario for uh, Friday into Saturday. Thank you very much. We do have a question from Erin Potty with CBC Cape Breton. Um, she's sent her question in to me, so I'll ask it on her behalf. Um, this question is for Nova Scotia Power. Um, are you sending any additional crews to Cape Breton? Uh, yes, we will be sending additional crews to Cape Breton for the storm where we anticipate the impact going to be on the on the Cape Breton part of the province as well as the northeastern part of the province. As Jason said earlier, we will be increasing our resources in those areas. Great, thank you. And her follow-up question is for Christina. Um, are, what is available for people who are living rough or homeless and is there anything else that will be offered to them? You want to sure. yeah. So hi, it's uh, Bruce McDonald again. I'm the manager of Mercy Management for the municipality. So we did confirm that the local resources that are available for the vulnerable community, the homeless shelter in Sydney, is available. Uh, they do have that ability to expand uh, 
into their extreme weather center that they have in the basement of that facility so that we did confirm that is in place. And of course, we will look at anything else uh, that we can to provide additional supports as required. Thank you very much. Um, those are all the reporters we have on the line, but we do have a couple extra minutes. So I'll, I'll perhaps run through this list of media one more time and you can indicate whether you've got an additional question. So we'll jump back to Mike Gorman with CBC. Mike, do you have any other questions? Yeah, just one more. I'd like to hear from the Red Cross, if I could, sort of speaking in general uh, on this issue of, of folks who are living in tents or uh, don't have a safe place to stay. How is the Red Cross approaching this across the province? So we're approaching this, um, you know, when Red Cross opens a shelter on behalf of the province or municipality, they are open to anyone. We don't, uh, we don't close the doors to anyone who needs support. So uh, if there is a shelter open in a municipality where um, anyone is coming because they've had to evacuate their home, um, our services will be available to anyone that shows up. Great. And Chrissy with CTV, do you have an additional question? Uh, no, a lot of them have been answered. Great, thank you. Uh, Jen Taplin with the Chronicle Herald, do you have an additional question? Yeah, just one, thanks. Um, just uh, for Bob Robichaud, uh, if you can explain how the uh, the trough coming in from Hudson's Bay, Labrador is going to complicate uh, Fiona and uh, it looks like bringing heavy rain on Thursday, like how is that system going to um, affect things? Yeah, essentially what we have is a, uh, is, uh, is, uh, the aforementioned trough that you mentioned, which is basically an extension of uh, an area of low pressure that is really not associated with the hurricane itself, but that's approaching from, um, from the west. Uh, and as it approaches us, it's going to uh, result in some rain developing over western parts of the province on, um, on Thursday, late Thursday. As that trough continues to move from west to east, it's going to start to draw in some moisture from the tropical cyclone itself as, as it continues to approach uh, Nova Scotia. So that's going to probably enhance some of the rainfall well ahead of the main um, uh, bad weather that we're going to get Friday night into Saturday. So as that moisture from, the, from Fiona feeds into that trough, we're probably going to see some periods of uh, heavier rain develop uh, Friday afternoon, Friday midday to Friday afternoon, probably more in eastern Nova Scotia than in western Nova Scotia. Uh, but the effects of the hurricane itself is it will, won't be felt until later Friday evening into the overnight hours, which will prob probably be the worst, uh, and then into Saturday morning as well. And, and this thing was going to be slowing down uh, the, the hurricane is going to be slowing down as it uh, moves up through the Gulf of St. Lawrence. So that's going to result in some gusty winds well into Saturday as well. So um, the, the, the timing of the interaction between that trough and the hurricane is very critical, both from a uh, timing perspective, uh, from a track perspective, and also from an intensity perspective. So those are all things that we're watching as everything is starting to unfold to determine what scenario we'll be facing uh, Friday into Saturday. Great. We do have Steve MacArthur from Hot Country 103.5 here now with us. So, Steve, do you have a question? Much for circling back to me. My question is for the Red Cross. Um, given uh, how expensive things are today and cost of living increases, I was just wondering if you have any tips or suggestions on what people on limited budgets can do to put together an emergency kit uh, in the event of extensive uh, power outages. I do agree that the cost of everything is is certainly increasing. However, you know, when it comes to a personal preparedness kit, you'd be surprised how many of these items you might already have. Uh, I'm thinking of some canned food, a can opener. Um, bottled water, things like that, uh, to be prepared, um, you know, have access, uh, access, extra medication on hand, uh, supplies for your pets. Uh, there's no need to go out and be extravagant in building a personal preparedness kit. It is what is going to make you comfortable should you be without power for a few days, or if you do end up being evacuated to an emergency shelter. And if that's the case, then uh, emergency social services in the form of food and other acts, uh, other supplies will be provided to you there. Steve, do you have a follow-up question? 
I do. Thank you very much, Marla. Um, I'm just wondering if someone, you know, is in um, an emergency or crisis situation, where is the best place for them to turn to ensure that they have some of those things uh, available in their home? Um, you know, should this be a severe storm with, uh, you know, extensive outages? Uh, are there any uh, services available to them to turn in advance to the storm? Uh, I'll certainly say, you know, certainly the Red Cross website um, would be a one spot to turn to for um, for information on how to build a personal preparedness kit. I know that uh, some of the access centers throughout Nova Scotia always have always also have the 72 hour preparedness guide that will provide some information on how to build a kit and things that you should have on hand. Great, thank you. Um, we'll go now to Kyle Moore with CTV. Kyle, do you have an additional question? Okay, um, Evan Taylor with CKBW, do you have an additional question? I do, yes, this is for Jason. Uh, I'm just wondering for anyone who might be a boat owner in the province, have you guys come to a decision on whether or not they should be pulling those for this weekend or is that sort of depend on where you are? Uh, I most yacht clubs and marinas have their own internal policy in regards uh, to what you should be doing with your recreational vessel. So uh, if anybody's wondering what they should do, they should probably reach out if uh, to a yacht club or, or their marina, I guess, for guidance. Uh, but it's always uh, best to be on the safe side, uh, given, the, given the fact that the storm's only a couple days away. Great. And Chris uh, in with CTV, you said you had one more question? Yeah, it explains itself, uh, Jason, but can you just explain, like, as to why travel was not recommended and, and for how long when the storm was here? Well, uh, I mean, in, in the peak of the storm, when you have high winds and, and, and you know, if, you're, if we're going to be receiving a lot of rain, depending on where, where in the province you're going to be, um, you know, driving through, uh, you know, roads that are underwater or potentially, uh, you know, running into some debris from a fallen tree, um, it's, it's always best, uh, if you can, to stay home, uh, you know, during the, during the storm. Um, and, and really, this is a time where we're trying to reach out to people to make sure they're prepared now. So they're not going to a grocery store in the middle of the storm looking for bottled water or, or phone charger or something like that. Um, you know, it's just a good idea to stay off the roads, whether it's a post-tropical storm, a hurricane, or even a large snowstorm. Uh, you're just adding risk to yourselves and your family uh, in being on the roads uh, during that time. Okay, hey, uh, we have two more questions um, from reporters, but they're coming through me, so I'll ask them on their behalf. So the first one is from Erin Potty with CBC Cape Breton. She's wondering if Nova Scotia Power can say how many more crews are heading to Cape Breton. Uh, as part of our planning process, we continue to monitor the weather and we make final resource decisions to get uh, uh, people into place ahead of the storm. So in this case, we'll be making those decisions Thursday night and Friday morning, but there will be additional resources in Cape Breton for the storm. Okay, and the next question is from Jean Laroche with CBC. Um, I'll direct this, Jason, to you, but if somebody else feels they can contribute something to it, please feel free to jump in. Is anyone visiting tent sites to urge people who are camped out to seek shelter in a more appropriate site? These people may not be tuning into these updates and have limited ability to hear warnings. So we've been in contact with, uh, the, with all the municipalities in Nova Scotia, so we, we'd really ask municipalities to, to reach out if they're aware of any sort of encampment sites or anyone, I guess, living uh, in the rough uh, uh, on the streets or, or within their communities, uh, just to reach out and to uh, ascertain where they plan to spend uh, that time during storm, or if they're even aware that there is a storm coming. Great. Those are all the questions we have registered for today. I'd like to thank the participants for all being here um, this afternoon, and thank you um, to all the reporters for your questions. Um, please stay safe, everyone, and thank you again for being here. Thank you.